Hello, I'm Malcolm Hazlitt. Who are the Army Cadets? How does a young person become one? And what can being a cadet lead to? Well, we'll find out more next on Our Time. And welcome to our time. You know, it may not be the first thing you've thought about, uh, how do I become an army cadet, or your children or your grandchildren, but when I discovered a little bit more about what the army cadets do, I thought it was time that you knew so that I knew. So please welcome Tamara, who is a captain with the army cadets and, uh, and a warrant officer as well, and also uh, Angus Gray, who is a cadet warrant officer. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Now, I knew nothing about the Army cadets, I've got to be honest. I didn't know that, I didn't know to begin with that becoming an Army cadet didn't necessarily need, uh, mean that you would end up in the armed forces. Hmm. It's funny you say that, a lot of people do think that. They yeah. think that oh, Army cadets led straight into to, to the real Army, but it's definitely not the case. No. Yeah. So, how did you become? what you are. Okay, so I used to be a first aid trainer uh, before mm -hmm. I finished uni. Uh, I was delivering a first aid course to what I thought was going to be real soldiers and uh, I turned up and they're a little bit too small to be real <laughs> soldiers. Be... Yes. yes. Uh, so that's how I got introduced to Army Cadets and I was there for two days and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed being with the young people. Um, their sense of uh, commitment to what they were learning was uh, greater than what I'd experienced with other young people going mm -hmm. to schools and things. Uh, I've always had a bit of an interest in military. I had a lot of family members who served. Um, for me, it's like, well, very interested in the youth side of things, very interested in military. Made sense to put, to put the two together and here I am five years later. Quiet. Angus, what, do you, what drove you to becoming an army cadet? Oh, definitely my friends. Um, they, they drove were... you in a car or on a bike? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they definitely um, brought me into the Australian Army Cadet Organisation. So you had friends that were already involved? Yeah. Right. Definitely. So, How tall are you? Oh, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> He's taller than me. <laughs> and I'm six foot 12. Um, <laughs> no, the thing that impressed me about you, Angus, was your age, first of all. Can I just ask you how old you are? I'm 15 years old. And I would suggest, we've had a chat obviously before yeah. we went to air, uh, I would suggest a very mature 15-year-old. Did that come to you from the cadets? Oh, 100%. Um, as soon as I joined the cadets and had a bit of experience there, I um, was there at the unit for about five months. Yeah. Um, they really love to put discipline and morale and um, a spirity corps and definitely got the, um, the discipline from there. Why were you wayward before that? <laughs> Your mother's over there, perhaps I should ask her. <laughs> oh, but you, different. No, but did you have a focus in your life? Did you know what you were interested in? No, definitely not then. Yeah. But what you are interested in is the outdoor life. Oh, yep. Yeah. Always going outdoors, always going up to the block, camping, uh, motorbike riding, mountain bike riding, all of that. Mm. Were you doing that too? I did definitely enjoy... Uh, being outdoors, I used to work at a campsite uh, just after high school. Oh, right. Uh, so I used to teach school-aged children, you know, canoeing and archery and rock climbing, things like that. Um, but for me, I love camping. So, you know, when they said army cadets, oh, yeah, they do a lot of camping, I'm like, yeah, I'm all for that. <laughs> yeah. But there's obviously there's a lot more. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so what was your first experience coming in? How old were you when you started? I was 22 when I first started okay. as a staff member. Okay, and that's the point. You are a staff member now. Correct. So you're in charge of who? So, <laughs> so not necessarily uh, Angus. Uh, so we are split up into uh, different levels. So um, our base level, which is where the cadets are, uh, are our units. So we have units all, all across Australia. Uh, the closest one is the one which is uh, Angus is from, so that's Hampstead. Mm -hmm. um, so then... Um, I mean, that's the point, though. They're hmm. all over the country. Correct. And, Correct. Then, and I just want to make the point again, it's not a feeding ground for the armed forces, but no. I gather 
that a lot of the people going through it, both boys and girls, would be interested in pursuing it because it's given them a real direction as to what they could achieve in life. Great. Um, talking to a lot of young people, yes, interested in the military life, but it could be that family members have served or it be, you know, great-grandfather great and great uh, in World War One. It could be that friends have joined, as, as Angus has said, mm -hmm. friends got him involved. Um, there's a number of different reasons why people don't join, not just because they've got an interest in, in, in the military life. Uh, but... Uh, but I guess not everybody's crazy for sport activities mm -hmm. either, to go and train every week and and I suppose the friendships that develop out of that mm -hmm. are like friendships. Mm -hmm. But I gather the friendships out of this are going to be like friendships as well. Absolutely. I've, I've but in a different way because there's a whole lot more experience. Yeah, and they tend to spend a lot more time together than uh, right. traditional sports. So what's the commitment? How okay. often do you go, Angus? Uh, every Friday night for three hours. So our unit goes from 6.30. We start there and everyone arrives at like 6 o'clock mm -hmm. and we finish at 9.30. That's when the end of night parade is. Right. Now, speaking of parade, that's probably one of the... Is that one of the first things that they learn to do, march? It's, it's certainly in, in the first term that they join but Just out. look, we're all sitting in the same way. It's rubbing <laughs> off. <laughs> so definitely in the first, they, um, first term they rock up, they have what we call the recruit program. So, yes, we teach them basic drill movements like how to march in time with each other because yep. uh, when, when they don't have the footwork... It looks quite messy. So we teach them how to do it properly. Um, we teach them basic things like the history of the Australian Army cadets and the Australian Army. So it gives them appreciation. Well, what is the history? When did it begin? Do you know that? So the Australian Army was formed in 1901. Well, uh, the Army was, but the yeah. cadets. So the Australian Army cadets uh, was around in the late 1800s. I oh, can't okay. remember the exact... 1866, I believe, the first go. unit. Really? So first unit in, in Australia. Mm. Really? Yeah. Where? Uh, Wouldn't know that. Was it? It's it's it, in it's in New South Wales. In Sydney. Yes. I, um, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's definitely in in the Sydney yeah. area. Doesn't matter. To know that it's that old is interesting in mm. itself because the colony would have been quite young then, really. Correct. Mm. Correct. Yes. It's interesting though that even then, young people were probably needing a focus as to where to go and what to do in life. And, you know, a, a, lot of pe a lot of people in my age group say, oh, we should send them into the army when, when you know, kids go a bit wayward because you sort of think, well, you know, they maybe just need to belong to something. Do you get a sense of belonging, Angus? Oh, definitely. The unit is uh, basically a giant family. Everyone is, mm. they feel like they're meant to be there, if you know what. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. Like everyone has a sense of pride and a sense of relationship with their friends and stuff like that. Like you don't just go there to turn up to the to do the lessons and stuff. You go there to see your mates, and it, it's really good experience. But the commitment is once a week. But you must have longer periods of time together. Mm -hmm. So, so we, um, depending on the unit, they may have one or two uh, what we call either in barracks or outfield. Mm -hmm. So it could be a weekend that's based in the barracks environment. So, um, you know, like it's buildings and playgrounds and things. So it's, it's quite quite pleasant because there's, you know, lots of toilets and, you know, there's the... the to clean. The, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's creature comforts um, yep. being in barracks. Going outfield, though, um, they sleep under what we call a hoochie, which is basically like a tarp. Uh, so they put their, their sleeping bag underneath their hoochie and that's what they sleep in outfield, which can get a little bit cold uh, yeah. during the winter time. I would imagine so. <laughs> um, but certainly having that, as as you said before, that, that esprit de corps where, and mm. that morale where people are really excited to be outfield, even though it gets mm. a bit cold, mm. the, the cadets work together to push through those challenges and yeah. it builds a resilience right. in, in the young people. Yeah, I can imagine that. That's really when your friends become your real friends because yeah. you know that you're all experienced something together, like... Cold. Absolutely. Or hunger. <laughs> what about hunger? Do you ever experience hunger? Because I've seen in some photos we'll show a little later that there's uh, food involved. Yes. So so we do some electives, which, you know, in one of the photos it's going to be of a cadet showing some fantastic looking food. Um, when we go upfield as a staff member, we make sure that our cadets are very well fed uh, to the point where I've had some cadets complain to me they've had a bit too much food on a weekend activity. So, they, so, so we don't starve our cadets. Uh, we certainly want to make sure they're feeling comfortable. We're just pushing those boundary zones. We are just saying before, though, most kids, when they go back home and parents say, what have you done? Oh, you know, we just had a good time. They don't really explain no. what's happened. So you've turned to Facebook. 
Correct. So we've got our brigade Facebook page, uh, and basically, when we have our big activities. So in October, we have an eight-day activity called AFX, and that's where all the cadets from from South Australia come together. So we're talking well over 500 cadets. They come in together for one big activity, uh, and we do many different electives. Um, and as part of that, we want to make sure that we're capturing all of that information. So we're capturing all the cadets that are doing first aid, doing you know robotics, um, you know doing all that fun stuff that they don't necessarily communicate back home, but that way we can have it up on Facebook, ready for the parents to be able to see as it happens. And that's a good thing, so the parents know you're doing what you... Now look, we've got so much more to show you, including photos of exactly what they get up to, and we'll be back in a tick to do just that. Our special guests are from the Australian Army Cadets, Tamara and Angus. Um, let's have a look at some photos mm -hmm. so that people have got a real understanding of what actually happens. So I was impressed seeing these things because, again, I've heard so many times if we could just train people that are a bit lost in life how to march, they'd know exactly what to do. So here's a photo just proving what that's like. Pretty familiar. Mm. Uh, obviously a lovely sunny day. Do you mm -hmm. march around till you drop with sweat or exhaustion? No. So no. We, 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 uh, we certainly limit the amount of time, making sure that they're enjoying what they're doing but not getting to the point where it's punishment. But really this is about learning to work together as a team, isn't it? Correct. That's the whole purpose of the marching together. Correct. Let's keep going. We've got lots of pickies to show. Now, a, a very valid point here is this isn't just for boys, Correct. obviously, because you're a girl. Mm -hmm. uh, what's happening here in this shot? So on She's our... lost her hand, I think. <laughs> on our annual field exercise each year, um, we have a, a special course called the engineering course, and they learn to create different bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. One of the big things they create is a big mud run. Uh, and the mud run is something that once is constructed by the engineering course, all of the cadets get in, they're in their uniform, and they, they run around there. You know, as you can see, it's lots of mud. People get lots of, you know, they get really wet and... Uh, Dirty sometimes. Well, she's happy. She yeah. is very happy. Absolutely. Uh, and I kept saying not swimming, drowning slowly, <laughs> but that's not the case because everyone's got a life jacket on. Correct. What's happening here? Because you still are fully clothed. Yep. So you still think, uh, so it's another elective course that we do on our annual field exercise. So um, these cadets had either just been canoeing or they were doing raft making. So they were just or washing off the mud from the previous. <laughs> correct. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Now, um, this guy is talking to whom or learning to do what? Okay, so whenever we're out field, we want to make sure that we're safe and that we know where all of our people are at all times. Mm -hmm. So we have um, radios that the cadets use and that we maintain as well. So um, he quite possibly could be calling into um, the command post to say that he's arrived at a location or is about to right. depart. So again, this is basic training as to how to live your life safely, I guess, Correct. isn't it? Learning to read a map, is this what's happening here? So, uh... Um, so in the PGC here, uh, probably doing um, navigation. So he's got the map out and he's got a protractor. And with the protractor, you can find the, the grid bearing you want to go to, and this gives you the direction of where you're going to go to your next point. Right. God, I haven't seen a protractor since I went to high school. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is again from a different angle. Correct. Still lost, but still looking. <laughs> now, I like this because obviously this is a bit of fun and games mm. at the same time. Mm. So just working on that teamwork that we yeah. really try and install in our young people is working together as a team to... to working to together for a common event, I suppose, isn't it, really? Mm. Of course, to pull the other team over the line. Now, this must come under your banner even more because of your background. <laughs> Correct. So uh, we like to teach, um, so as part of the curriculum for the cadets is they do first aid. So they learn basic first aid to begin with and they gradually build up on their skills. So uh, this was a scenario where we had about 30 patients and about 20 cadets. So what I was saying for about pushing the boundaries of these cadets, we give them basic skills of how to do first aid and then they go out and they manage scenarios like this. Well, I'm guessing though this person doesn't have burnt hands in reality. Correct, just, so, so, just some fake wounds. There. There's makeup for every <laughs> occasion. <laughs> um, now this is a pastime that a lot of people are currently doing, particularly if you're young. Mm -hmm. um, 
What a great way to do it, and at no cost, I would imagine. Correct. So our, our field exercise uh, each year is completely covered by Army, so the cadets don't have to pay for a single thing for our eight-day activity. And the things that they do, as you can see, rock climbing being one of them, is absolutely fantastic. And like I said, they get it free of charge for that one. Yes. And this was just taken yesterday, is Correct. that right? Correct. Swimming madly. So we've got an activity at the moment where... It looks gonna... like a shot from a movie, doesn't it? <laughs> what a great photo that is. And doesn't she look good in the water? <laughs> she does. So uh, we've got an activity at the moment where they're going to be out in the water with kayaks and things. And to, to make sure the safety of our young people, we do do a swim test. Nothing too strenuous. It's like swimming 50 metres within a certain period of time and they can mm. just um, tread water for two minutes. So we, we are very conscious with safety. Uh, to make sure that our young people are safe when we take them outfield. Uh, but at the same time, they have a lot of fun while doing it. Well, getting back really to the safety aspect, oh, and food, not to forget food. <laughs> Lots of food. So again, going back to the electives that we that we deliver. So yes, we deliver our basic stuff. You know how to navigate, how to um, you know talk on the radio, how to do basic drill movements. But that gets boring after a while. So what we do is we add in a lot of stuff to make it really interesting. Um, so at this point, uh, so we did a catering course. We taught twenty young people how to cook. They cook their all of their meals for the entire week. By the time they came back and they got given their ration packs, they were complaining because they wanted to go back to the food that they were cooking yeah. throughout oh, the I week. Why? <laughs> you know. No, that's so valuable in life because a lot of young people don't simply don't know how to cook. Mm, mm. And this one? So this one, so um, I'm going to transfer to Angus now to talk about the leadership courses because this is incorporated as part of that. Yeah, okay. so there are three leadership courses, um, four including the Lance Cobbler's course. So at the unit we do a Lance Cobbler's course and then after you progress to Lance Cobble from Cadet, you um, move on to full corporal. And a full corporal, you're taking charge of a section, so that's around 10 cadets, mm -hmm. and you're leading them outfield or in barracks, uh, doing drill movements, different types of lessons, variety, stuff like that. And then after that, you progress on to the sergeant's leaders course. So as a sergeant, you are platoon sergeant, so you're taking charge of a platoon, which is around 30 cadets, and you're leading them at a platoon level while the corporals um, are leading the sections. So all built into one um, company or platoon. And where are you in that in that sort of racking of positions at the moment? Um, I'd probably be in the command position. At uh, this rank, you, um, you're with the... You're 15. Yeah, 15. <laughs> Pretty good. Very good, yes. Very impressed. <laughs> Is you. this what you feel you've always wanted to do? Oh, definitely. I've always wanted to... Um, go outside, um, be in the outdoors, and learn more about the army in general. But uh, do you feel that you were sort of born to be in the army, a leader in the army? Oh, um, yeah, definitely. So, Angus, I ask you this question before. If I could give you anything in the world, what do you think that would be? Um, it's Probably. really, it's a thing of ambition. What is your ambition? My ambition is to definitely join the Australian Defence Force. Right. Does it worry you that a war could be around the corner? Oh, uh, I don't know, to be honest. I suppose it worries everybody uh, that that could happen and you would be in that position. But you'd be well trained to be in that position definitely. from what you've, what you've learned. How old were you when you started? I was 12 and a half years old. Okay. It, how, how young can people start? So they can start the year they turn 13. Right. Okay. And um, they leave the year they turn 18. So if they turn 18 2nd of February, they'll um, march out at the end of that year. And they could enlist then, couldn't they? Correct. Correct. So if they enlisted then in either the Army, the Air Force or the Navy, because this covers all three, doesn't it? Correct. There's, yep. there's other Defence Force It's just the Defence Force, mm -hmm. yep. So does that give you any standing when you go into the mainstream of the Defence Force? Look, there's there's no recognised prior learning. It's not as though they can get a year off their, their training. Mm -hmm. However, the fact that um, cadets have an idea with what military um, does, it means it doesn't create as much of a culture shock yeah. when they sign up. Yeah. Um, you know, basic skills like navigation, you know, how to, to, to teach people how to, um, you know, hold themselves in a military environment, it certainly does hold them in good stead 
for the military. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, these sorts of skills that we teach not only are great for the military, but also for life outside. Oh, for life of, generally. I exactly. couldn't agree with you more. Because no one really achieves anything if you don't have the discipline to actually go for it. And that's a, a question I ask a lot of people in your age group. What do you want to do when you're 70 years old? Or what do you want to do when you're 26? Or, you know, what are your plans for the future? What are you trying to achieve in life? Because without something to look forward to, you've nowhere to go. You've no mm. roadmap as to how to get there. Mm. So was there anything else that you have as an interest in your life or is it, is it all cadet, cadet, cadet? No. Do you look forward to Friday nights <laughs> with a passion? Oh, I definitely look forward to Friday nights with a passion, but I also have other stuff outside cadets. Like mm -hmm. I love um, going out with mates and going up to the block, motorbike riding, mountain bike riding, definitely stuff to do with friends, stuff like that. But it's all outdoorsy stuff. Oh, most You're an most outdoors of sort of guy. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, where do you feel it's taking you? For the, in the five years that I've been in cadets, I've commanded a unit that had about 80 cadets in it. So, you know, I was 24 at the age. So being a 24-year-old and being in charge of potentially 80 cadets, it it's, uh, uh, it's, was quite eye-opening. It's also really helped me with how I work. So I'm a nurse. Um, that's in my, my job outside at cadets. Mm -hmm. So the, the leadership... That's, hey, sorry, that's a that's really right. important point to make, that you, you still have a day job. Correct. Correct. And you're doing this as a joyous thing to do. Correct, correct. Yeah. So, what so, a great hobby to have. <laughs> exactly. So what I'm learning in cadets, you know, that leadership, that command, definitely translates into to what I'm doing as a nurse, you know, that ability to be able to talk to young children as well as, you know, parents and whatnot. As a nurse, I need to talk to all sorts of people of to, to, to advocate for my patients. So, of course. Yeah, so not only do cadets get, out, get things out of it, as a staff member, I get so much out of what cadets offers me, for me as well. You know, you get nothing if you don't put in in the first place is the truth in life. Correct. Because yeah. the more you're involved with other people doing things, the more joyous it can be. And we'll be back in just a moment to talk a little more with Tamara and Angus. We've been talking with two most interesting people from the Australian Army Cadets, Tamara, and Cadet Warrant Officer Angus Gray. I love giving you that title because very few 15-year-olds <laughs> would have any title at all. So <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. Um, so if, if, if you're looking to join the cadets or looking to find where to find cadets, mm -hmm. what's the quickest way? Okay, so we've got the website. Um, so basically you jump on, you'll be able to find your closest unit. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you want to join up as a staff member, it's the same process as well. And a staff member can be someone with experience from anywhere, really. Anyone. It could be mum and dad of a cadet. It could be right. someone with previous experience or someone with no experience at all. And I love your costumes. <laughs> do you get them too or do you have to buy them? No, these are these are all issued through the, uh, the Australian uh, Army Cadets. Isn't so. that brilliant? Absolutely. You get a costume. This <laughs> I know you don't call it that. What do you call them? It's a uniform. The, oh, the mm. uniform. Mm. Uh, of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in the future for you, mm -hmm. do you feel you'll swap roles eventually? Do you think you'll end up in the Australian Forces in some way? Or will you continue to be a nurse or a nurse in the Australian Forces? Do you have a life plan? Yeah, it's, it's kind I've of... I've given you many options. <laughs> it is kind of in the back of my mind about joining the Australian Army as, as a nursing officer. Um, just focusing on my civilian career at the moment, getting my experience behind me before I start pondering that sort of career path. Mm. So. And for you, Angus, do you feel uh, as this goes on for you, you finish your school, your secondary schooling, no doubt, will you utilise perhaps the Australian Army as a university? Uh, yes, most likely. After school finishes, I plan on getting an apprenticeship um, as an electrician. Mm -hmm. And then once I've completed that, um, apply in the Australian Defence Force for a combat engineer role. So you do have a plan. Yeah. The good news is for anybody looking uh, and looking for the website is it's there is sometimes a little bit of money exchanging hands, but it's very small in comparison to the experience that you get out. And thank you so much, Tamara and Angus. Thanks thank for you. joining thank us you. on our time. We're all still sitting with our hands clasped. <laughs> uh, it's been wonderful to talk to these two young people about their futures and the future probably of our country and the defence force in our country. So until next time on our time, keep yourself nice till then. See ya.